How do you make the bruiser white Pete Dunn look killer when entering the ring? That's the question. Welcome, oops, knocking the camera. So, this next section, completely different, but one of the biggest parts of the whole build is cutting the, the logo for the back. And I've already done the singlet, the singlet has been done, so this is all safe. So we're in the Cricut design space. Cricut is a, it's a cutting tool. Well, they do lots of other things as well, but what I have is a, it's a cutter. You cut vinyl, card, paper, fabric, all sorts of different things with that. I cut fabric or vinyl. So this is Pete's designs that I have saved. I'm sorry I haven't got sort of screen recording software, maybe in the future, but this will just be have to do for now. This is Pete's design, this, uh, everything else. This is for his singlet, so this is the side, and this is. I'm not going to go through a whole load of um, sort of how we use this software. I might do that in a separate video if the interest's there. Might do a complete Cricut and Cricut software and Cricut cutting tutorial and how I cut fabric and things like that. But for now, I'm literally just going to cut. The design so I don't need any of this bruise away part because we're not we don't have that on the coat that's just for the singlet so I'm just gonna find all the pieces of that I don't need that and I don't need one of them what's the chances of me getting it right nope that one okay everything is in different sections so we have that that and that and those are the basics for Pete's um, Pete's design. We have the background, which is the, the triangle with the with the star. Then we have the outline. We have the main design, and we have the eye. Now, color-wise, I color code everything. This is not going to be yellow, but I do it yellow because it's quite a similar red and I don't want to get mixed up and put the wrong fabric into the cutter. So, I first now I need to work out the size of the logo and I will do that in a second. I might film that, yeah, we'll film that in a moment, but let's just talk about this first. We're going to cut these in individual parts basically that's it really because it's all all the hard work's been done I just need the sizes so if you bear with me a second I'm gonna go and get the sizes that I need so bear with me one second and I will be right back right we're looking at I've worked out we've got a width of about 13 inches because this is the back piece this is the widest piece of the design we're gonna be layering it this is where you start with so up here is the size, it's in inches. We've got a 13 inch uh, width by an 11.25 height. That's, that's a decent enough, that's quite a big logo. But obviously things are gonna get smaller and smaller as they go down. So we're changing the color round because it's the opposite for the singlet. This is actually going to be this way around this will this this being a red but obviously I've changed it to yellow because I don't want um, I don't want to get confused with the reds so I always do if it's a similar color I'll do one a completely different color I just have to remember that that's a change of color black for the bear black for the eye which actually sits above there like that so now we have to readjust everything to fit this so as you can see, that's too small. So we don't have to do any measuring now. We can work it out by, by eye. As it is seen here on the software, it has it is as it's going to be cut. So that's about right. Try and center it. There you go. That's nice. You still see the red. Now the bear should go on top, and then we'll make that bigger as well. Too big. Bring it down. 
keep shrinking it until, I mean, you can be more, you know, scientific if you want, but all you need is fine. But don't forget, it's going to be cut separately anyway. I'm going to have to assemble this on the coat anyway, so it makes no difference. So the bear is a good five and eight and a half inch wide by eight and a half, thereabouts high, which is a nice cutting size. It also helps with that, that we don't have to, um, you don't really want to be cutting little tiny things out of fabric. And the eye, we're going to just make that a little bit bigger because I like the eye to hang over slightly. Okay, so that is how it's going to look on the coat. We've got the singlet, I'll show you the singlet in a moment. Well, I mean, actually you've probably already seen the singlet because this video is not coming out until Pete's worn it anyway. So you would have already seen the singlet if you've watched the match. That's if, if there was a match, who knows? You live in the future world, I live in now. So yeah, that's it basically. That's all we need to do once we've got all our sizes right. Um, okay, and now we can go to make it. Ah, right, yeah, okay. I know what that is. Right, bear with me one second. Okay, so the, the issue we had there was that we're not online. These images are actually stored online. I took put my phone on airplane mode um, and it knocked off the Wi-Fi on my laptop. So yeah, that's why I couldn't, I couldn't cut, but we're back. I'm just gonna do a quick check just to make sure everything is it hasn't reverted back or anything like that, that's fine. So, make it. Now it allows us to do it. So now what it's gonna do, it's gonna sort out your boards. All of my boards are 12 by 24. So first thing first is change everything to 12 by 24. Now, this one isn't, isn't yellow. I have to remember, I always remember that, that this one isn't yellow. It's red, but we'll, I'll show you that in a moment. So this is really ready to go now. We don't mirror when you cut in fabric. You mirror when, that means mirror the design. You mirror when you cut vinyl because it, it put, you have to put it on upside down and press it and, and then it reverses it. With fabric, you're cutting the right way up. So you're cutting the fabric as you will see. It. So you must keep everything as it is. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. That's a nice, uh, yeah, that'll fit on the board nicely. And as you can see, they it will arrange things nicely for you, so you can uh, easily sort it. You wanna make sure that you're on the first one as well. If you, if you start on two, it'll only cut two, which I discovered. It doesn't cut them in order unless you start on number one. So that's really um, good to go now. Ignore this, if I click any of these, it will kick me out. It's trying to say that it's too big, but it's not. You can see it's not too big. So, now what we have to do is go to continue. I'm, I'm connected in to the cutter, which is back at the other side of the room. Uh, we'll go and do that in a moment. Oh, yeah, the cutter's not turned on. So, next step to the cutter. Apologies if you can hear the rain. It's very, the rain's really loud in here, so. It's affecting the audio, I apologise. So, just off camera, I've cut the fabrics for the designs. And here they are here. So this is for the background, this is for the bear, and this is for the triangle. I've made some adjustments to the size because I didn't account for the hood falling down. You don't want the hood to cover up the whole design when it's dropped. So we've, we've made things slightly smaller just to accommodate for that. So, before you cut any of this fabric on the cutter, it needs to be bonded. And this serves two purposes. This is the bonding I use, it's heat and bond light. Um, and then I'll, they wrap it in this plastic all the way through, which is really irritating. I wish they wouldn't do it, but there's just no need for this at all. So this is heat and bond and what this is, it's an iron-on, get that into shot, 
it's an iron-on adhesive backing. One side has a textured glue of adhesive, and then this side has a paper side. This is the side that you iron. So, you want to cut, you want to lay your, the fabric on, and you want to cut it with the wrong side of the fabric facing up, because you're going to glue this to that side. So, wrong side up on top of the paper side, and then we're going to just cut around our fabrics. This, I find the rotary cutter is the best for this. Okay, there's one. There is a wrong and a right side to this spandex. You just need to look very carefully. This is the wrong side, it's slightly darker. So off we up. So this is the heating area. This dirty, horrible piece of fabric is a, it's just a heat sensitive, a heat resistant, sorry, mat. It's not really heat resistant, it's okay. And then under that is just a cutting mat and that's just to protect the table. Uh, this is where I do all my heating. And I use a Cricut again. There's no, I pay for my Cricut stuff, same as everybody else. This is not my advertising Cricut, but Cricut is, it's just great for what it does. Everything is great. This heat press is great. It's just coming up to temperature now. Um, and it works sort of like on a press, like this, or you can use it as an iron, whichever, it's great. I like to bring this up, is it 130 or 150? We'll see in a minute. Um, there you go, 155, I was wrong, it's 155. So, first thing you wanna do is lay down your spandex, make sure you've got the right side, and you wanna glue, and you wanna add your heat and bond to the top, and then begin to slowly at first just work press over the top of the heating bond and you'll see when it's all done I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it for a mega long time I like to do it for a little bit longer because the glue on the cutting boards can sometimes pull the heating bond back off when you take it off so I like to do it a little bit okay and that's what you're looking for it's just you know, and it's papers now stuck to that Okay, so that's everything cut. We have the, the background for the bare head, the triangle for the star, cut quite nicely actually. Points are always a nightmare uh, on the cricket. It's points, it doesn't like points, but that seems to have cut quite nicely. There are some, some things that are just so small and intricate you cannot cut them out of fabric, it's, it's just not possible. So I would use a vinyl then. I use a, a really good quality, it's called a Sports Flex vinyl. Uh, you can stretch it, you know, once it's burnt on, you can stretch the life out of it and it doesn't snap, it doesn't break. Um, so it's really good for that. What we need to do now, and I will time lapse this because it's a bit of a fiddly job. I could use a transfer tape. This is the bare head, by the way, sorry. This is the bare, all the bare head pieces, all the little bits. I now have to reassemble this onto here, and then I have to press it with a cloth on top without disturbing anything. This is the joy of Pete Dunn's logo. Uh, and, oh, yeah, you notice I've, I'm, I'm heating it 
I'm going to heat press it on top of this cutting mat. This heating bond, if I pr heat press it on this, it's going to stick to this and that's it, you've ruined it. The heating bond won't stick to this, this cutting mat. No matter how much heat I apply, it will not the heating bond will not stick to this. I like to do all my logos, if I can, off, off the item. So if it's a pair of trunks or tights or coat, I like to put all the logos together here and then just do one stitch onto the garment. Uh, it's just easier rather than trying to feed a huge coat through the sewing machine um, to do all these little intricate parts of Pete's logo. So now I'm going to time lapse this because it's long and you, you don't need to see it. So I will be one minute. Okay, so that's that done, and it's really, really hot in here at the minute, especially when you got that heater on. I'm sweating a bit. So there we go. That's what all that work was for. As you can see, it's nice and stuck. This still has to be stitched. Um, every one of these has to be stitched on individually. Uh, yeah, it's another big job, but you know it's what you have to do, and that's pretty much. The same for any um, any outfit I make. You know, you are stitching on lots and lots and lots of little bits. Uh, but as you can see, it's all on and ready to go. And then this one will sit onto the triangle somewhere like this. And then the whole thing will go. Ooh, hang on. I've got enough hands for this, and this whole thing will sort of sit on the back of the coat like that. So, the next job is mounting everything on to the back of the coat, stitching it all on, and then once that's done, it's really just assembly then, putting the lining in, attaching all, sewing all the parts together, sewing the lining in, and going from there, and it's raining again, it's gone from really really sunny to raining to hot to cold I don't know what it's doing at the moment but we're getting there um, yeah so next step is sewing all the logos on hello so I've tried to get a, a reasonable angle for this this is about as best as I can do um, you're not really gonna be able to see much but I'm just gonna do one piece and then I'll run the rest in um, a time lapse because this is you're looking at I don't know you're looking at a long time to sew this if you can see it, if I just poke it through there so what I've got on the sewing machine set up I've just got a black thread I've got a zigzag stitch and I've got it on about the si stitch size um, and for this I'm gonna say about two uh, I've got my pressure, my foot pressure at two, and I've got my thread tension at five, and I'm using a, a an, an open toe foot, which is technically what we're doing is an applique. We're going to be stitching around the edge of each piece, uh, and an open toe foot allows you to see where you're going. If you had a normal foot, you wouldn't be able to see where you were going. If you can see, I don't know if I can do this, but you can see. Ooh, uh, you can, there you go, it allows you to see the line. That's not a great picture, but this is not a great camera angle. So, I will do one in real time, and then we will cut to a time lapse. So, I'm 
looking at doing is starting off by hand and then I'm literally following the edge. My, my foot tension is so low so I can turn the, fab, the, the fabric without having to lift the foot. You don't turn the fabric unless the needle is inside the material. That's important. This machine actually has an option where it will always stop with the needle in. So no matter where I stop on my on my foot pedal, it will always stop inside the fabric, which is great because it saves you having to put the needle down every time you want to turn the fabric. When you're doing lots of little pieces like this, you really want that control and that ease. So I'm just following around the outside. You, prob you, can't, you probably can't see what I'm doing there. I'll show you once I've finished. And then the rest will have to be on time lapse because I'm pretty sure no one wants to sit and watch this. I certainly wouldn't. And I'm the one doing it. Be careful into the corners. You don't want to go over. And you're literally, I mean, I suppose you, what you're doing really is drawing drawing with thread I suppose um, and it secures everything on and it also just makes it look nice I could just run with a coat you could use a straight stitch you don't need a zigzag stitch with a coat because the whole point of a zigzag stitch is that it stretches with the fabric but you don't need to stretch with the fabric in a coat because it's not it's not stretchy but it still gives that lovely clean edge and if you're patient patient and you, if you don't mind the work can you see this one here it, oh there we go it's slightly better you can see all that zigzag around the edge that is what needs to be done on all of these little pieces and I'm gonna do that now in a time lapse <laughs> and the bare head, the background, and the red triangle. You can see that it's not great in this lighting, but you should be able to see the thread all around the edge. No. So, that's it for the design on this. There's not much, just this, this bit, that's it. So now it's time to start assembling everything. I have the two sides, on, sorry, fronts and the two hood pieces. Here, we're going to start with the hood. We're going to assemble everything, do the same on the fur, and then the two will go together. So, this is going to be again another, another time lapse because. You don't want to sit here and watch me stitching every last bit of that. So, yeah, uh, on the homeward stretch, let's start.
so that's all sewn. I did all that off camera because it's a very just a big boring kind of long winded job you can see the hood is on sides are on <coughs> and that gives us our nice lovely fur, faux fur coat which is very nice and then that sits inside like that here so I've got the hood on here as well uh, there's the there's the logo which I've forgotten to put the eye on so I'll do that in a moment but that's pretty much all the last job is the big the big construction there where we attach the lining to the leather and then we turn the whole thing inside out and then we're pretty much done apart from we have to do the armholes and then just fix the bottom from where we turn it inside out. You can't sew the armholes um, you can't sew the armholes inside out with everything else because you won't be able to turn it inside out. I did that before and I could not figure out why I couldn't turn it inside out but it was because I'd sewn the armholes in. The armholes need to stay out and then you can just do a sort of simple stitch inside and then we got I got a, I'll get a brush, a real hard brush, and just comb that fur out so it gives a nice little bit of... But that is pretty much pretty much it, um, apart from the main construction. What I'm going to do now is pin all the lining in, um, put the eye on. So the next time you see this, it will be somewhat done, and then we'll just go over the last little finishing touches, and then this is job done. Right, well, it's the end of the day. It's in nearly 10.30 on the night. I've been working on this most of the day since, mm, since about nine o'clock this morning, 10 o'clock this morning. So I'm calling it a day. So where, do, where are we? Let's just recap where we are. I have pinned, I have pinned all the lining. It's all inside out. The lining is pinned to the coat small hole left at the leave a small hole at the bottom I'll explain this a bit more tomorrow when I'm back in um, once that's stitched round that's pretty much it really that's the basics there's no zip there's no buttons there's nothing that's it um, it's just a nice open loose coat it's very heavy it's very warm I imagine peat is going to be very hot under all the lights in this but it's only for a few minutes till he's in the ring. So I suppose this point, I should say, if you're enjoying this, um, it is my first ever YouTube video, first ever video ever. So I hope you're enjoying it. I hope I'm not waffling on too much. I hope it's been interesting and you've, I've been explaining myself properly. So if you are enjoying this, uh, please feel free to subscribe and press the little bell icon and I'm sure I'll be doing more and more videos over the coming months, years hopefully. Um, if it's a success we'll definitely be doing more videos. I've got a few ideas I'd like to do. So yeah, if you're enjoying this so far, please subscribe. And for me it's going to be till tomorrow morning, but for you it's going to be good morning. We're back. It's another day. It's raining again and it's hot again. So welcome to England. Um, have a cup of tea. I'm tired, but we're going to crack on. And the reason why I'm in such a rush, um, there's a potential to actually hand this coat to Pete today. In about three hours time, I have to leave. So I'm up here nice and early and we're going to try and get it done.
comes in, the hood, here, logo on the back, doesn't fit me because I'm, I'm a bit more uh, wider than Pete, but then you can see, remember I said the, that this part would just want to fold out naturally, that's what you want, I mean that is hood doesn't cover the logo too much, it's always going to a little bit. Um, hood, up, there we go. Now all we have to do is let's take care of these arms here, we need to stitch these arms and there's a hole in the bottom where we pulled it inside out, yeah, that also needs to be taken care of. But there you go, looking good. So the next step. Nice big fur lined hood, I'll get some better shots in a moment. We've, um, I still have to sort of just go into the house and take a really hard hairbrush and just pull this hair out of the, out of the sleeves, but the sleeves are all nicely dressed. Logo on the back, the hood won't, whoops, let's put that back on. Could won't affect the logo too much when it's on. Uh, yeah, and the other side there, all nicely done. So yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it for this coat. Um, I'll get some close-up shots of it um, at the end, and hopefully we might be able to. Uh, Pete himself accepting the coat later on today, uh, but I can't guarantee that. And, we'll probably, and I'll try and get some shots if I'm of it being used in the in the actual ring on tapings. Um, but apart from that, yeah, we're done. So uh, just want to say thank you um, if you're still with me, uh, if you've gone this far. This is, my, as I've said before, this is my first ever video. I'm, you know, I don't normally talk when I'm working. I'm just working, so I hope it's been helpful. I hope it's been interesting and useful. Um, and thank you very much for watching. Uh, it means a lot. Um, yeah, not more to say. Please subscribe if you want to see more. The little bell icon, all the other things that you do on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, I'll uh, get some nice close-up shots of this now, um, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>